Welcome to part two of the Super Mario Brothers 2 commentary. Oh man, I am very happy that I'm coming back to all of this. You know, this, you know, this is all coming back to me. Oh, by the way, yeah, hidden block. <laughs> oh dang, you would only know that if you were playing a small Ouija. With the big pink Dick Cheney. <laughs> If you do not know what that comes from, uh, trust me, if, if Gabriel were around, he would gladly explain it. That's actually a joke that he made long ago. Um, well, actually, no. Actually, no. I added the word Cheney because you know me. I use censored swearing. Yes, the D word instead is called Dick Cheney. It's, it's not a bad thing that I actually censor any kind of language that I have on this channel. It, even if it's not comical by means of what um, most people think of as funny in modern day, it at least shows I'm at least in some way, shape, and form decent. Oh, by the way, Buster Beetle's underwater. Why? I mean, the, well, then again, we are talking about fat Italian plumbers and a, and a very thin green gardener who is able to basically uh, breathe in the water without air. Uh. For a second, I thought that Luigi was going to um, try to see if he could hit the ducking buster beetle while underwater. Let's we'll make something very clear. Unless if, I think unless if you're playing Mario Forever, I don't think you can hit enemies while swimming underwater. This goes for Goombas as well. But, um, this game introduces to us something much more important, and that is the ducking, um, the red piranhas. Oh man. The red piranhas. You know... When I first found out about, actually no, I, I you know I've been playing um, Super Mario Brothers 2 since 1999, 2000, but I didn't fully get to truly play it until 2008. When I first found out about the ducking, um, when I first found out about these ducking red piranhas, I thought that you know I was gonna be boned. However. In Mario Forever, this actually, this there's actually some backstory to this. Mario Forever, I ended up beating before I beat um, Super Mario Brothers 2. So as a result, I ended up knowing what the pink piranhas were gonna uh, were gonna be like. Cause you see, the pink piranhas in New Sweet, in not New, dang it, the pink piranhas in Mario Forever are basically the red piranhas in Super Mario Brothers 2. The difference with the pink piranhas, however, is that they fire they fire flowers out of oh, fire flowers. They fire they shoot fireballs out of their mouths. <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you tell I'm tired? Can you tell I'm ducking tired when I'm mixing up everything in the commentary? I assure you, this is not for any of the wrong reasons. I'm just not in a state of mind where I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm able to do this without problems, but this is just ducking painful. Ah, oh, I wanted to hit the block. Oh, it's just it's just coins. Duck it. Let's just um. Oh yeah, I need to I need to mention that. Yeah, one of the things I don't ducking like about this game that uh the Hammer Brothers evil twin is in this game or evil cousin as John put it. And the evil cousin basically uh, it charges at you. Yes, in this game, Hammer Brothers will charge at you, tossing. Oh, jeez, get away from that. Get a ducking away from that, please. Oh my goodness, why is that even ducking there? Seriously, you don't do that. At least, it, at least has gotten rid of whenever you get a new mushroom or fire fl flyer flower. Why? <laughs> Why is my commentary this bad today or tonight? <laughs> it's 12:51. Saturday Night Live is almost over. You know what? I didn't even bother watching Saturday Night Live tonight. Who the heck was on? Oh, right, Russell Crowe. Ah, Rocky. 
You know what I, you know what my first memory of Russell Crowe is? Russell Crowe versus the world. Or fights the world, or something around that name. You remember it from South Park. He's basically beating the crap out of everybody for no ducking reason. <laughs> It's, it's considerably one of the utmost offensive shows of all time, at least created by Trey, by Parker and Stone. But <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the only reason why they did that, uh, the only reason why they showed that was because uh, I think, yeah, Cartman, Kyle, Stan, and Kenny, I think we're waiting to watch um, the official trailer for Anuses of Fire 2. Which you know is a words of fire two, but of fire two. Are you happy? <laughs> but yeah, um, anuses of fire two. Um, that was the only reason why they were whoa, die, 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 die. <laughs> They're even longer in um, in the in, in the later worlds. Don't even get me started. But as I was trying to say. Um, yeah, Russell Crowe vs. the World is just, it's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. It's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen come out of Parker and Stone. I don't even know if I still have my old VHS tape of that, because, um, I don't know if any of you guys are aware, but back between, uh, uh, oh, duck, please don't tell me this is the one that charges at you. Okay, good, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's okay. Whoa! <laughs> Why? Am I crying? Oh my goodness, I'm crying. I've got tears coming out of my right eye. Why? Why am I crying? I'm not sad. Or it might be. What? 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 What, what do I have to be sad about? <laughs> nah, I've got to be. Well, I have the right to be sad about many things. <laughs> Oh, but I will talk about those off screen. I've got no, I've got no reason to talk about them on, on film, <laughs> or at least on. <laughs> what the, why? Uh, where did King Koopa go? This game is glitched. This game is stuck and glitched. What, what's going on in this game? Seriously. Dang! Now I lost my complete train of thought. Yeah, you know, I you know I thought this was gonna be you know a, a good a good talk about you know Parker and Stone making some of the utmost weirdest incarnations of um, TV shows, or at least um, showing the utmost offensive of things. But I, I guess I guess not. I, I guess not. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm sorry, folks. I'm sorry, folks. I can't believe I'm so tired that I can't even remember what I'm talking about. Now I'm in Candyland, and I'm losing my mind. Oh, speaking of which, I finally fucking beat Candyland. Yes! I am so happy about... Oh, oh nice. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, moonwalking with the current. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, this is a new addition to Super Mario Bros. 2, the wind current. Basically, you basically have to run with the current in order to do some weird things. But, if you know what to do, you can basically, you can moonwalk your way to victory by, by basically holding left and right, and just going through the blocks. You don't even have to jump at the top. I think you can also do that in the original um, Famicom version, so definitely do give that a go. Oh, wait, is it Famicom or is it Famicom Disk System? Yeah, because I don't know if this was ever released as a regular cartridge. I know it was released as a part of the Disk System, but... Uh, where am I so... Oh. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people got lost when they when they first noticed that. They're like, uh, what? What, what, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> and that's the end of the level. I think there is a warp zone here that takes you back to World 3, but... No, World 4. World 4. I think. Don't take don't take my word for it. I think there's a warp zone right there that takes you back to World 4. But um Yeah, so yeah, just, just don't jump over. Or maybe it takes you to World 6. Yeah, I think that particular one takes you to World 6. I have to double check. Again, it's been a ducking long time since I've played Mario 2. 
the, the fact that I can even recognize any of these layouts is just... It's just surprising, because, again, I... I have fond memories of Super Mario Bros. 2, but, you know, it's been over four years. Do you really ex well, actually, no, it's been almost four years. But still, do you really expect me to remember every single thing about every single game that I play? I hope that you, I hope that you don't expect that of me. Sure, I might be the guy that might 100% some of the weirdest games of all time, Mega Man X6, uh, but... <laughs> I'll tell you right now, there is nothing bad with playing some of the utmost oddest of games out there. RBA Baseball 94. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, what is this? Is this a looping level or... Yeah, I think this level loops. You have to go through specific pipes in order to be able to go to the next portions of each level. This is a very obscure way of saying, um... This is a pipe maze. You need to figure out where to go. You know what you know was a very crafty pipe maze? World 6-2 in Mario Forever. Yes, I'm gonna keep talking about Mario Forever, because I want the game to be brought back to Boozy All Games. Because, you know, I, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that Soft Tendo decided to up update the game. I'm glad they decided to enhance it as much as they possibly could. But there's a lot of stuff missing in the Soft Tendo version of Mario Forever that I feel that Boozy All Games got right. But, I feel that there's a lot of stuff in the Softendo version that Boozy All Games didn't get right. So, you know, if the Softendo version ever gets back under the ownership of Boozy All Games, or BoozyAll.pl as, as it used to be known as, you know, more power to it. But if it doesn't, I'm okay with the Softendo version. At least now you can continue from the level that you left off on. That's something that I really felt bad was not uh, was not available whenever you'd get a game over. Ugh, you do not know how upsetting that made me. Actually, funny enough, uh, uh, I'm not gonna ever get a game over in this. I'm actually gonna do the uh, the unlimited. Yeah, I'm gonna do the shell trick in World Six One, I think. Uh, for 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 Mario Two, of course. But what you but uh, in Mario Forever, what happened? Uh, actually, no, no, not Mario Forever. But in Super Mario Bros. Two, one of the good things about this is that um, whereas in the original Mario Bro uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, in All Stars anyway, if you end up failing the world that you uh, yeah, if you end up getting a game over, you begin at the beginning of the world that you left off on. In this game. If you get a game over, if my memory serves correctly, you end up you end up restarting from the level that you left off on. So, like for example, if I decide to you know go to World 8-3, get a game over, and then you know try to get uh, and then you know try to continue. I think I can continue right from 8-3. I don't have to go back to 8-1 as Mario One did. Um, and now it's time for the backwards yes, the backwards shell trick. Some of you might remember this from my very interesting Royal Meta mashup mix, or Royal Love mashup mix, known as Unappropriate Things. Unappropriate Things is a mixture of the Brain Scratch Com slash Super Gaming Brothers Laugh um, remix that, dang, I forget the name of the guy that made it. I combined that with Space Queens, Speed Dust Factory 2007 CP Reverse Mario Starman Frenzy. I combined that alongside, uh, what was it? Trapped Inside a Speed Dust Factory, which is a mashup mix of Speed Dust Factory 2007 and Jimmy Savino slash Lord of the Jimmys Trapped in, uh, trapped in the Mountain. Oh, man. <laughs> and a few other tracks here and there that I can't think of off the top of my head. I, I, I can't believe I even remember all of this. I really can't. I, I'm, I'm just quite surprised. Oh, 
by the way, there is actually something I need to point out here about the one-up trick. You need to keep in mind that if you, well, at least if you're playing the original Super Mario Brothers, if, if what John is saying correctly, if you get over 128 chances, because of the way that the game is coded, if, if you get more than 128 chances, this also applies, I think, in the original Super Mario Brothers as well, you start going into negative numbers. As a result of this, if you lose a chance when you're in the negative numbers, that's an automatic game over. You have no leeway of surviving that. You'll end up having to, you know, go back to the beginning of the level that you left off on. Or I think in the case of the original FDS version, the beginning of the world, I would have to double check that just in case. As you can see, um, I'm just going to keep getting one-ups until Luigi collapses. Or at least just turns into small Mario and... Time's up, yes. <laughs> 127 chances. Yeah, I can last on that. Actually, I do... Is zero considered an extra chance number in this game, or no? I'll double check that. Nah, does it matter? Does it really matter? Oh! <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot about that. Uh, ooh, do I try going for this again? I don't know if I try going for this again. Do I try doing it? Hang on a second. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Wait for it. Boop. Ah! I tried going for it. Wait, did I get 8,000 out of that? I thought I got 8 ducking thousand out of that. <laughs> You're not supposed to get 8,000 out of a Koopa shell unless you do the trick. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Still, though. You know, funny enough... Oh, oh, oh. You know something? I think that was actually the Hammer Brother that chases after you. I think that was the Hammer Brother's evil cousin. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you're gonna be seeing more of those as we, as we progress. Uh, I don't know when they start showing up. I think they actually were in the original game, but... Uh, I think you had to wait a while before they actually started chasing after you. Still, it's ducking scary. Let's see, do I decide to moonwalk this? Or do I decide... Oh! Very clever, Luigi! Very, very clever. Nice moves. Nice moves. I never thought. That is a very nice plan of yours. Uh, let's see. Are we gonna keep going? Come on. Come on, Luigi. You got this. <laughs> uh, am I gonna go for... Nope, I'm not going for the coins. <laughs> Yeah, I really don't remember much of this. <laughs> I mean, I don't get me wrong, I remember the layouts, I just don't remember exactly what I do with the layouts. It, it, it's been such... It's, again, I, it's hard for me to say it's been such a long time, but you know, this is kind of how I started. This footage is kind of where I started from on this channel. Oh, there we go, there we go. Got, got, hey, got what I needed. But yeah, as I was saying, you know, I recorded the I recorded these games so many years ago, and I never bothered I've never bothered getting around to them because you know I just didn't I wasn't motivated enough, and I still don't kind of have the motivation now, even though I'm gladly doing this out of the sheer out of the sheer goodwill of my heart, my heart, spirit, mind, life, you name it. But, you know, it's kind of hard to do this alone. <laughs> it's hard to think of things. It's hard to discuss things when you don't know what to talk about. When you've exhausted every single other possibility beforehand. This blue is very soothing. So is this red. I like the shade of red that's used here. The shade of green as well. It's like a, it's like an analog TV. Ooh, that reminds me. Yeah, um, I don't know if you folks would... Don't judge me about this, but I still use analog TV. Yeah, 
Yeah, you, you probably be talking to Prize. I still use analog TV. I, you know, I have upgraded to HD. I have upgraded to HD in my house. I've had an HD TV. I've, my LG TV I've had, you know, since 2009, 2010, uh, which was actually a pretty much a gift from my half-brother. Uh, he ended up getting it, uh, I think, circa July of 2006. July or August of 06, I think. I don't think it was in June. And let's see what else. Um, I recently we actually ended up getting a Samsung Smart TV in 2014 or 15. Was it, was it 14 or 15? I think it was 14. If it wasn't 14, then it was 15. And if it wasn't 15, then it was 14. But still, though, if I personally had to say, you know, I had, I've honestly had a fun time messing around with HD, but I have a Durabrand analog TV from 2007 or 2008 that I still use. I still use it for the DVD recorder. I still use it to watch TV regularly because my LG TV, the, uh, the color fuse is blown out so it delivers an infrared effect. Like, if I, like, like, you know how, like, if you leave something on for too long, how it delivers an afterimage? Yeah, imagine that, but in, but the entirety of the screen is all infrared. It's not even regular color. That, de that means that one of the color channels is inverted. That, yeah, that definitely means one of the color fuses is inverted, and I don't know which one. So, sadly, you know, I don't know how much that would cost to repair in modern day. Because, again, this is a TV from 2006. I'm probably just better off just getting a new HD TV for my bedroom. But you know what? Here at Home Base 7 2008, you know, I don't know if I'm ever I'm going to be uh, going to a new place. I don't know if that will happen within the next matter of years or whatever. But I'll tell you this. Um, of course, there is a Home Base 8. But if it, that's my grandmother's place. Obviously, I'm not. Obviously, I'm not going to move there. So the next, the next home base I'm going to move to, whenever the time that be, that's going to be home base nine. And home base nine, you know, I'm going to have all. Not I'm not. I'm going to. I will have a whole bunch of things that you probably would have never thought I would have had in prior moments or prior years, if only because you know we here in the state of Massachusetts don't have all the luxuries that you folks do uh, have elsewhere like it, it, some of you folks might have abroad some um, in the far east such as South Korea or Japan so, uh, we don't have what you folks have in New York in California in Washington State Massachusetts kinda gets the fishy end of the stick when it comes to our resources and our infrastructure so <laughs> It kind of goes without saying that, you know, come the time I end up creating and moving to home base 9, whenever that be, you know, it's definitely going to be very interesting to, it, it'll definitely, it'll definitely be very interesting to view where things go for, beyond that point. And, you know, what I'll probably be using when it comes to my viewing entertainment. Who knows? Maybe I'll just, you know, I'll tell you this. I could care less about Ultra HD. Let's jump to 8K. That's right. I'll jump right to 8K. Heck, uh, I'm already using Hyper HD and 4K for my uh, for my artwork, so I might as well jump to 8K with that as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is gonna be a fun time. Fun time for all. But uh, that is the end of what is this part two? Okay, on to part three. <laughs>